Hello everybody and welcome to 7th Gamers with Xenaris. Today we are playing Distant Worlds Universe. This is a game by Code Force, and it is quite possibly my favorite grand strategy, grand campaign, space game ever. Uh, there's been a few games that have held that title, but this game is arguably the best of them because it's real time, it's a very long game. And it's complex, probably overly complex for a lot of people off the bat, I'll admit. I failed horribly like the first five times I played this. But um, it is a really, really cool game in my book. Uh, it's $60 on Steam right now. It is sale on Steam. Uh, or you can buy it from the publisher, I think. Don't quote me on that, I'm not sure. But I'm going to start a new game. And this is the Universe Edition. So there's a lot of options here. I've never actually done the introductory game. I'm more one of those more fly blind type of people. But I'm gonna go with uh, Standard Empire and the Age of Shadows. Uh, I've tried the Pirate Faction. I don't really like them so much. I don't get quite the build up for it, but... Hmm, excuse me. Uh, so let me set up the galaxy. There'll be several of these screens. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No. Custom game, Standard Empire. This is the one I wanted. This lets you tweak the galaxy to your heart's content. I like this little warning up here. Dwarf, tiny, and small and standard galaxies require one gigabyte of memory. Large and huge require two gigabytes. I'm gonna make this a freaking epic map. Um, yes, I could tweak these top higher. I'm not insane. I'm gonna make research take a while. Tone down the space craters because there's already too many of them. Uh, let's see, space creatures, there's like worms and stuff that'll, that are spacefaring that can come attack you. Uh, basically mobs. Pirates, on the other hand, are technically civilization class. They're quite powerful in this game. Do not underestimate them, especially early on. Turn down this a little bit. Uh, pirate proximity, you can determine how close or far they are to you. Um, average kind of keeps it on par with the game, with everybody, all the other AI civs. Pirate strength, uh, normal is probably your best bet here. If you want to have the option of completely eradicating the pirates, check this box right here. If you want them to be kind of a constant element showing up as new ones or old ones die off. And ah, map types. Usually I go with varied clusters because it makes the map a lot more random. with these options selected uh, colonization and territory colony prevalence influences number of colonizable planets and moons in the galaxy mm, keep the I'll make these both the plentiful alien life determines the independent populations they're basically neutral by default and how many satellite how many settled planets there are Influence range is kind of like, hey, we own this, go away. If you want to make this a really difficult game, you could set this down further. So on like this map, it's going to be massive. And this determines how far away your colony ships can go by default. And how cohesive your empire has to be. So if like you're on one of those little tiny islands, which you'll see in a bit, I'll point them out once the game loads. If you're on one of those little tiny islands, What'll happen is you can end up in a situation where you can't leave your island without forcibly invading another civilization. But um, 1.5 is decent. There'll probably be like one island in the corner of the map that won't be accessible to anybody else. 
or a leaveable, and then we'll probably be in an alien civ there, but whatever. There are a lot of races in this game, as you can see. Everybody knows humans. I mean, I'm pretty sure you are one. Darians, fish people, rodent people, insectoids. Insectoids are kind of the bad guys in this game. They're... Yeah, they're just kind of the bad guys. I'll just leave it at that for now. All these have bonuses and plus and minuses. What planet types they start out on, what their native habitat is. Yes, you can play as dinosaurs. Oh, and they all have their own victory conditions. Which I'll go into later. Is I think that's on one of the next couple screens. Naturally happy. Dang. Victory condition for the race. Happiest pi people in the galaxy. Oh, and you can read more about them too. Ooh. Millennials. There are different characters, which I'll go into. Governments. Oh, and there's a whole different slew of government types, which I'll go into as well. You got your standard democracies and republics and kingdoms and stuff, but you also got like um, hive minds. Where are they at? There's one in here I'm looking for. Mercantile guilds. And all of them handled differently. Like monarchies are typically very stable, unless you uh, have a governor on your home, your capital planet. That's yeah, because then they can overthrow the king very quickly. Tekins, friendly, stupid, dependable. Funny thing about this is if I recall, uh, they see no value in washroom regularly, thus tend to smell. Uh, victory condition, start the fewest wars. Destroy the most sand slugs. Uh, I think those are one of the alien critters. Of course, all the governments handle differently. Some have elections, some don't. Some get bonuses to economy, others to military, others to happiness. Blah, blah, blah. And I don't, do I want to play as humans? I'm not sure if I want to or not. This is a problem with too many options. The Xenox are kind of fun to play. Because, well, they're cat people. Or at least cat mouse people. I don't know. Looks like a cross between a cat and a mouse and a mustache. Control the most ruins. Explore the galaxy. I'll just play humans, otherwise I'm not going to decide. Hmm. Options. Is 
a really cool one here. Okay, I'll pick this one. I wish you could pick, like, black. I mean, I know why you can't, but still. Empire name. That's an I for the record. Ayuna. It's from another game I play. And. Dun 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 dun. Monarchy! Monarchies are relatively normal as far as this game is concerned. Everything else is a lot more random, but monarchies are like the baseline. Almost baseline. They're almost a perfect baseline. Feudalism is like warring states, basically. Uh, hence the bonus to troop recruitment. I think republics are a lot like democracies, except they're a little bit more stable. Military dictatorships. Read more. Autocratic form of absolute rules, unrestricted by law, constitutions, or other social and political factors. Ooh. So they're basically a military autocracy. Got it. And then corporate nationalism, which is kind of a unique one for games. Uh, they're it's good if you convert to it if like you've got a strong private economy, because the government basically says. I'm in control of all of this now. But if your economy is too large, like, it'll be eaten by corruption. Of course, if you switch away from it, you'll have a short term collapse. But I'm gonna go with monarchy, just because it's something I'm familiar with. And start at the edge. Get that option. Pre-warp, corruption, normal. Because I'm monarchy, I will not start at soul. Which, yes, soul will be in the game and there will be humans on it, but I will not start there. Oh, uh, what is the maximum of this? 19? Works for me. And so I'm going to tell it to auto-generate it. I'm not going to do anything with this box right here. And yes, independent alien colonies can start new empires. Although I'm sure 25 years will go by in no time. Enabled all the fun stuff. And I'm going to disable giant Kaltors because otherwise I'm just going to annoy the crap out of me because they're really hard to kill early on. And then they just kind of show up out of nowhere. Giant Kaltors are... Space bugs with the ability to travel between systems. I'm just going to leave it at that. And then start the game. And it'll take some time generating a new galaxy for me. And I'll get to like look at this galaxy and be like, this is either going to really suck or be really awesome. I mean, you'd think starting in the edge would be bad, because starting in the center you can go any direction, but the edge. I think it gives you a more defensible position. At least my personal opinion it's more defensible. I don't know if you'd agree with me, but I don't like to be taken on from all sides. But uh, I've had some really interesting things happen while I've played this game. Like there's one time it started me out in the system with a salvable functional ship that had a warp drive, which was amazing. But just like that one random generated fact right there put me light years ahead of every other Civ. Because I was the only player, I was the only civilization in the game that had a warp drive. And you can't see it, but there's actually a box right here that'll show up in the game. Let me see if I can add it real quick. Without screwing this up. 
Hey, you. This game doesn't capture very well, but there you can see it now. Welcome to your empire. You are the ruler of the humans and it's a monarchy. You have one colony and one systems. Standard empire in the age of shadows. Pirates, smugglers, and mercenaries rule the galaxy. Yes, the bad guys are in charge. Thankfully, there's a metric shit ton of them. And your first two steps are going to be colonization and hyperdrives, which I'll start up in a moment, and it'll take a while for that to research. Basically, my mission right now is don't piss off the pirates, get the ability to travel between systems. Sinius 2. Pause the game, zoom out. Ah, good, I'm in my own little cluster over here on the left side. I approve of this. Each of these little squares right here is a sector. As you can see, I can hit most of these systems. I'm not going to be locked in a box, at least not in a tiny little box, but I'm at the ground here. There's going to be someone in probably like this system right here, which they're going to have a hell of a time getting out of there. Because I've, I say that because I've seen it happen to them like four or five times now. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Ruins. Destroyer abandoned. Sometimes they'll give you a colonizable planet in your home system. Which they didn't for me, but okay, whatever. Now, first thing you're going to want to do is build a spaceport. And this is going to be like the capital of your empire here, so... Um, medium or large is up to you. Usually I default to a large one just because it's your capital, but that takes a sh it costs a lot to build it. And Woo. Yes, these are all the resources in the game. Just saying. Uh, why not? I'll just build a large one. And it sh pops up right over there on this. Like right now, just get an outline of where it's going to be, and once I unpause, it's going to start building. It's so literally the first thing you'll do build a spaceport. Second thing you'll do is go to the research screen. I like to turn off automation of research. Oh, I'll have to hit that next, that the whole thing, like the automation, what isn't is. And we're going to find warp drives. So I don't care about anything else. It's up here. Damn it. Fiddick. I'm in the wrong tab. Please ignore me. Energy and construction. Okay, here we go. Oh, have to find the ruin on the system first. That won't take long. High tech and industrial. What I can do though is tell my people start on colonization. The transport and enhanced transport. Uh, the interesting thing about being humans is I can de I can colonize continental planets by default. Basically Earth like worlds. I don't need the tech, but if I want to go to any more advanced ones, I have to have the tech. Kind of mandatory on that. Energy collection for now. Something about humans and missiles. Oh, whatever.
Your first star base will be your first research station, but right now it's just the planet. Empire summary, set empire policy and automation. Suggest, suggest. Yes, control gifts manually. Control colonization manually. Let them suggest that. I don't like fiddling with tax rates. I usually let most games handle it. I will let them design the ships though, because honestly, I'm not patient enough for that, and that's going to be a lot of extra watching. Ship recruitment, automate, war and attacks. And suggest. Always enlist ships we capture. Yes, you have both your uh, military fleet and the private civilian fleets. I'll get into civilians in a moment, because it's a lot different than most games. So basically this means if it's not higher tech or larger than we can build, it'll go to the civilian side, but if it is, you'll retain control of it so you can salvage it and take tech off of it. Apply policy, done. So this is the overview, which as you can see, there's a state side and a private side. You run the government, not the in entire society, which means the government makes money off the civilians. The stronger your economy, the more money you get. Unpause the game. I'll zoom in. Construction begins on our new space station. Oh, and you have characters. Blah, blah, whatever. Don't really care. Unless it's something really horrible, the guy ends up being a freaking douchehead. Don't really care. Okay, I didn't think they'd actually start firing at me. Normally they kind of avoid me. 
Go away. What's interesting is, like, I've gotten this game to the points where, like, I had so much inter-system defense laid down, just like defense stations, that nobody would come near me. Like, my homeworld and its entire system was a veritable fortress. Like, trying to just invade my homeworld was like, there was like 20 defense stations just orbiting. Oh, well, I mean not 20, like I think 10. Yeah. 10 state-of-the-art planetary defense platforms. Like pirates would come in system briefly, see this and just go, nope. And just immediately jump out because they're like, yeah, well, that's not worth our time. Two point seven billion people. There, it's a little bit easier to read now. All right, for this game, I'm thinking the episodes are going to be about an hour a piece, because otherwise, you're not going to really see a whole lot. Spaceport constructed. Now the nice thing about this spaceport is it has its own firepower and most of the little pirates that wander through are going to stay the hell away from it. Unless they bring a fleet down on me, which they're not going to. For right now, I'm just like, meh. But what I do need to build is some ships, which I'm not going to do it through there. I'm going to do it through here. Four exploration ships, two construction. Eh. I guess two and two is it's about all I can afford. And they'll be built at spaceports, not at planets, just spaceports. As you can see, planets slowly orbit their stars, moons slowly orbit their planets. Whoa, we built a starship! And they will automatically explore different things. It's going to take you forever to get over here, but... Go repair that destroyer. I want to see if it's got a jump drive. Oh, no hyperdrive. Darn it. Oh well. And here's a bunch of little private ships. Mostly miners. And there's a car two cargo shuttles. But what the civilians will do is, like, say there's a uh, massive military buildup. They'll go find the resources fuller and bring it to the shipyards. You do not control the goods, the flow of goods. You just control where you need them. Civilians handle basically everything else on their own. What I'm going to do, because I know I'm going to need it. I want to just send you. Ah, how can you be a foreign spy? There's not even other countries yet. Eh. I'm gonna start you moving over there now, just to make this easier. Ooh, gold.
And I want a mining station. Means he's going to go back to get the resources to build a mining station. And space slug. Where are you at from a space slug guy? Investigate. And warfield precursors. That is what I was waiting for. This one. Nobody cares about that. Give me warp drive. <laughs> then you can go back to that. Oh, they're in the asteroid belt. Okay. And yes, every single one of these tiny little rocks has a resource allocation to it. should happen is these little escorts are going to take off from the frigates. Ah, oh, yes! A gas giant with all the resources. I approve of this. This is really rare for this game. Helium and hydrogen are going to end up being your two primary fuel sources. What'll happen is this one? Yes. What's wrong with that? Ooh. We have discovered a thing. There we go. Helium. Hydrogen and what was the other one? Caslon, I think? Yep. Fuel. Finding them both at a gas giant is fantastic! No hyperdrive, darn it. 20 firepower.
And this dotted circle around it is, of course, the ship's range, which right now is about dirt. that to retire itself. A couple more construction ships. By the time I finally leave the system, you'll see civilian ships is like you'll see space lanes basically. What's going to be interesting is when I first get the warp drive, you're going to see every ship in the system immediately go back to the spaceport. Because civilian ships get upgraded like yours do, except they pay the government to upgrade the ship, so you make money off of it. Oh, mining station's been constructed. Alternatively, you can just use the little menu down in the bottom left to say, hey, one of you, go build a mining station here. The game just figures it out on its own. And there you can see one of the private ships is mining on its own. Ensigns? go to the diplomacy screen. Apparently I can blow them out of the sky. Interesting. I don't know where they're at. Just so wait, how do you do espionage? There we go. Have to cancel the mission and then. <laughs> See what this guy's chances are. A little bit better. Stealing research from the pirates is also a great way to get your uh, first technologies. Just saying. I 
thought I turned off station on building automation. Didn't I? Whatever. It's not an option. Oh, we're sixty percent of the way to warp drive. Got technology from disassembling it. Down to seven. Doing pretty good. Down to three. Yes, we're getting closer. Not big into building dedicated research stations. Not at the early of the game. And the pirates and other civilizations can refuel at your stations, and this gives you money. Not a whole lot, but uh... Destroyer, yep, they finished repairing it. Saves are done hourly? I'm not even sure. Up oh, every 30 minutes. Hmm, it's not a bad idea.
Ooh, independent transport. But yes, this is really one of my favorite games. Like I said, though, it took me like five or six attempts just to figure out how to play it. Because most games, like you control the entire economy. But this game, no, you control the pri you control the public sector. So civilian corporations are really where all your money comes from. If they do well, you do well. It's going to be interesting is when I figure out uh, warp field precursors. I'll have to go and upgrade every single ship. I stand corrected. I thought there'd be like space lanes by now, but maybe not. So I think that was the game where I like doubled the research speed that this one is on to something retarded. That was a really long game. Like most space games, uh, research speed determines the game length. <laughs> like most civilization building games, to include Civ. Now what will happen immediately after I research this technology is a uh, exploration boom will happen. Economic boom will just like go whoosh. and like you'll have scouts flying off to the far flung distances of the universe. All of them care. Like, yeah, we think you should have more of these. Freaking civilians are just like pew! Ooh, colonies. There's actually quite a few colonies around here. Sekarins are a humanoid type. They will very easily be assimilated. It's cool. There's a couple already colonized planets nearby. I approve of this. I need to set this one up. Not this one. This one to do something else. Add proton. <laughs> There's... Oh, I know why you're going there. That makes sense now. Because there's already a planet there, you can just refuel the planet. <laughs> Tracking. I actually have to tell them to do this. 
Normally they're like Phew. Now if your ship runs out of fuel, yes they can eventually make it back. It just might take a long time. Now these blue ones are just like those in my immediate sphere of influence. Oh, I actually stole their territory map. Check that out. Go Intel guy. Eh, I'll try it. Why not? Worst that can happen is he dies. Ooh, what is this? Yep, secure in homeworld. That kind of sucks, actually. Now, theoretically, if I do really, really well, I can assimilate their entire, like, setup, but... Fortunately, they're probably on par with me right now. Survey says... I don't know yet, actually. The only reason I know they exist is because I've... Stolen the map of someone who knows about them. Yep. Captured. So much for my agent. Oh, this one's even better. Steal their galaxy map! <laughs> That'll shunt me ahead like generations. What? That happened like immediately. That's horrible. building a high-tech station. So I want that research faster, man. It's too slow. I want to be able to colonize things. 
and if you integrate all the races into your empire, you get their colonization bonuses as well. Ultra genius. Man, he's an ultra genius too. Uh, oh, it's horrible. Yeah, they've built mining bases on asteroids. The AI kind of does things on its own sometimes. Not always for the worse, of course, but... Usually it's pretty intelligent about things. idea send them over there tell them to refuel and then they'll have the gas tanks they can go to other systems Uh huh, huh. So annoying. No, 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 no. Fuck it. Move two. Damn it. I guess move two overrides the explore function. I did not remember that. Next time I shall remember this. Fleet. First fleet. Control that system. Why don't you have a hyperdrive? Whatever you knuckleheads think you're doing, it can wait.
The Great Forgetting. Sorry, I should be reading this for you. Have the downside of having played this a few times already. So, backstory of the game, there are, all the civilizations were once spacefaring, then there are, a great power dominated the galaxy and basically ruled over everybody. But then suddenly they vanished, never to be seen again. Hint, hint. Gee, I wonder where they went. Clearly not foreshadowing for one of the two expansions to this game. Or two, three? I don't know how many. There's a lot of expansions for this game, though. Like these guys are the pirates in the sector. Got it. Not that I disagree with their assessment, but I want to build them myself. Ancient Guardians have been encountered. Exist as pure logic living inside computer networks. Do not enter Girax Prime. Or face their doom. But yeah, uh, the Ancient Guardians, they'll settle just about anywhere they can. Well, actually, they don't settle. They'll build station, like mining stations across the galaxy, but they only settle in one system. That's right, colony ships are dedicated constructions. Wait, or maybe I don't have the tech for them yet. Oh no, you have the they're built on request. <laughs> I 
Nice. Like, oh, there's a gas mining station here. A bunch of empty stars. Kind of disappointing. Secret to warning has been offered. Yes, tell us more. Mechanoids share an important warning. The Dark Ones of ancient times long to return. They seek a pathway back to dominate over all. Beware of unknown monuments and beacons that light the way. Be prepared for the revenge of the destroyers. Like I said, ominous. And on that note, I'm going to pause the game here, and I'll see you all next time. Thank you for watching. This is, this is Anaris signing off.